<laughs> All right, catch premium sporting content by downloading the Sportsmax app from the Google Play or the App Store. Yeah, ensure you get downloading today. All right, let's get into interactive. Well, Stennis Alvanda, Andre Russell has made it clear that contrary to popular belief, financial incentives are not the main reason why some Caribbean players don't play test cricket. To put it bluntly, he says they are just not interested. We have some responses from Facebook. Yeah, Leslie Jack says that's not his game. I get that. He never played that. In fact, he hardly played ODIs. Well, he played 56 of them. Patricia Williams says don't make the players call the shots. Management needs to introduce rules whereby players do not have options when required to play any home matches. Furthermore, they should expose players as much as possible to all formats of the games as is seen happening in other cricketing nations. I'm not sure I agree with all of that. Um, Fenton Dev says, trust me, none of these T20 players would succeed in test cricket. Mm. Brenton McCollum. Brenton McCollum. Okay. Which players, by the way, surely not the West Indies because including Russell, they don't have many test standard players. Mm. Ouch. Is that it? Well, if you talk about application in batting, I can see that narrative, you know, holding, holding some weight. But there are players to me with the technical ability that would suggest that if they put their minds to it, they could, they could flourish in test cricket. I could think of Nicholas Puran to me, who <laughs> technically is a pretty solid batsman. Um, Brandon King as well. Yeah. Technically solid batsman. So I think there are players in the, in the white ball game at the moment who, if switching their focus, could assist the West Indies positively in red ball cricket. If this was 30 years ago, let's take some voice notes. Phil Jackson from Trinidad. I agree with Andrew Russell. I believe that it's, um, if it was just about money, then they could have had discussions with the board to decide, you know, you play some matches, you don't play some, you play some T20 tournaments, you don't play some, so you can maximize the, both, the best of both worlds. But um, they will play T20 for the West Indies because it, uh, it advances their personal brand. But um, if they're not interested, they're just not interested. Yeah, you know what, Lance? I'm not convinced that there is a best of both worlds. Um, I think if you can make a significant living playing T20 cricket, playing franchise leagues around the world, um, you, you go, what, four to six weeks, you get your rest and you go again another four to six weeks somewhere else, then that's perfect. To have to play T20 franchise cricket, T20 international cricket, and then switch formats to now having to apply yourself in test cricket or even one day international cricket, that's difficult. I'm, I'm not sure there's a best of both worlds in that scenario. Yeah, and, and, and the fact is, if you get a good IPL contract, there's, there's no other cricket in, in, in the global game that will pay you as well as the IPL. Yeah, all right, let's take another voice note. Hello, Sportsman, this is Leslie from Trinidad Tobago. I totally agree with Russell Russell. As a matter of fact, if you compare the business model with the sports model, you would totally agree with Russell in that if the atmosphere or the environment is not conducive, you would not get your employees to be 100% committed. And I totally agree with Russell. As a matter of fact, if you take the Android that in situation, you would totally agree with Russell. Mm. Mm. All right. All right. Norwegian 400 meter hurdler Karsten Barholm and two time Olympic pole vault champion Armand de Plantis will line up against each other in a 100 meter race in Zurich, Switzerland on September 4. Ha <laughs> ha. Over to X to see what they are saying. Robert, surely Varham wins easily, question sign. Mm. Oh, says, I feel like Varham has this. He was a decathlete and used to different events. All right. Alex Dakers, need more cross-sport showdowns like this. Mm. Salama, track just got more entertaining. Coach V, on this, 
Oh, this is going to be fun to watch. Varham versus Mondo in the 100. 400 herders versus Pole Vault. Love it. L Lance. <laughs> <laughs> I like what Dacre said, that um, track and field needs more of these kind of clashes. And uh, I think it is exciting. I think what a lot of people are missing, it's because the Plantus is a jumper and uh, Varholm is a runner mm -hmm. and it is a running event. They're assuming that Varholm is going to be the favorite. But a lot of jumpers and throwers are pretty quick. In fact, there are certain biomechanics of uh, sprinting that allow you to be um, strong in some of these jumping and, and throwing events. And I think the Plantis is a lot quicker than most people think. I think he's a lot quicker than most people think. By the way, he ran 10.57 as a junior. Yes. Um, and that was, what, four or five years ago? Um, so I suspect this race is not going to be as easy for Varham as many individuals think. Um, and I tell you what, maybe at about 60, 70 is the Plantis who is going to be out in front. And it's going to be a matter of whether he can hold on in the last 20 or 30 meters of that race. But it's not going to be a walkover. Yeah. Is, is um, it that one person issued a challenge? What, what did this race come about? Well, I do remember yes. it started somewhere with Shelley and Fraser Price and the Plantis yes. issuing challenges to each other for them to compete. And then I think somewhere along the line, Varham came into the picture and here we have it. But I agree with Dacus as well, Lance, because I think track and field needs a lot more clashes like this. Yes. Two man or two woman clashes. Um, so another one that I would love to see, unfortunately, Sharika Jackson is injured at the moment, but it's Sydney McLaughlin Leveroni versus um, Sharika Jackson, maybe at 300 or 250. Um, yes. <laughs> one of those. Um, and I can think of a few others as yes. well. It would have been great when Usain Bolt was around um, if he maybe did. Uh, I don't know what distance you could get for Bolt versus David Radisha. What mm. would have been the perfect distance for both of them to come down to? Um, maybe, maybe Van Niekerk over 300 meters. Well, we did get that one, didn't we? Well, no, not the clash, but Bo clip. showed his quality over 300, 300 yeah. um, and that he could probably be the best based on his, his <laughs> times. Um, but yeah, I, I think the sport could do with a lot of two men, two women clashes yeah, um, going forward. And, and well, maybe this is the start of yeah, something. Se September 4 is the one to look, is to look forward to. They're asking when is the clash between? Um, I can't race against Ricardo. He's too young. <laughs> <laughs> Lance, I'm injured. I have been injured for three months. Well, Surely. Well, it's a no contest then. I won't race you because it, <laughs> it, would, it wouldn't be worth my time. <laughs> Lance, make up your mind. Are you not no, racing you me because I'm too young no or no are you race. not racing no me race, because... No race. There's no race. <laughs> show, show is over. Friday. We'll be back again. I am disappointed. <laughs> I so love a challenge.